she thought like, what's the point of marriage? Like, why should I do that? We can just move in together. Like, what's the difference? Welcome back to the Dr. Crockett Show. I'm your host, Dr. Susan Crockett, and I have with me today probably the youngest guest that we've had on the show, but full of such great knowledge and character. I'm really excited to have a conversation with you, Andrew Hall. Welcome to the Dr. Crockett Show. Thank you. Yeah, it's really an honor to be on. <laughs> Thank you. So I... I I was uh, talking to you earlier, and we had lunch and had a wonderful lunch together. Yeah. Uh, I heard you say something about having your own YouTube channel in the past. Yes. So I used to be a YouTuber <laughs> back in the day. I think um, I was in probably seventh grade. I remember at the time, I'd see these different like special effects videos on YouTube. And I was yeah. like, oh, I want to do that. Um, so I, I got a green screen. I would I wanted to clone myself, That's like awesome. talking and do all that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it's probably some good blackmail material. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's but, brought you here to the Dr. Crockett exactly, show. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So That's so yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, actually what brought you here was the interview I did with Anthony Terry on the Dating Over 50. Yes, yeah. highly recommend, yeah. It's so much fun. So if y'all haven't seen that video, it was in my first 10, I think. Y'all go back. We'll put a link in the... In the um, in the show notes for you, but you had the idea that we should do one for dating under 30. Yes, actually, I'll give the credit to my mom. She had okay. the idea. I remember, yeah. um, so Anthony, he was um, my dad's surgical tech, Dr. Gary Hall, uh-huh. um, and that's that's the connection. That's how we know, because yeah. I work with your dad. and yeah, yeah, exactly. So one day he was like, oh, you really not, you need to have my son on yeah. the show. He'd be great. Yeah, so we, um, I think my dad mentioned it one day um, with Anthony being on the show, and I I don't think I've ever met Anthony, but my dad's told me a bunch of different stories. Mm-hmm. Um, super funny guy. And so we uh, we watched the episode. Um, and I think one day my mom was like, hey, you know, Andrew, he should be on the show and he could do Dating Under 30. And yeah. I kind of thought, I was like, oh, you know, that's, that's, that's a good cool. idea, but just kind of, you know, chuckled. And then I ended up getting a text um, saying, hi, you know, um, reaching out for the Dr. Susan Crockett show. I was like, oh, like, I'm, <laughs> like, on, I'm like on this it. is happening. <laughs> yeah, this is happening. So. Well, so that, yeah, because I started thinking well, we, we want a diverse audience. We have, spe- mm. you know, we have some themes of the show about helping people become better versions of themselves and making the world a better place and our little seven seeds, which are seven seed colors. But, mm. you know, when we talk about our guests and the conversations that we have on the show, uh, it's important to me that we have diverse groups of people represented. And mm-hmm. so I think this, uh, the idea of talking about the dating scene under 30, even though I'm not in it, is a really important thing for us to bring that up to uh, people's um, mind, you know, and yeah. give them a little insight into what you're dealing with. And that kind of morphed into talking about marriage. The, the topic of the show today is actually uh, marriage and millennials. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, your audience may be wondering, why does this 25-year-old who doesn't have a ring on his finger, what does he know about marriage? <laughs> That's a good um, question. Yeah. But a lot of um, a lot of what I've learned is from people that have way more experience, especially my parents. They've, they've taught me a lot about marriage. Um, and one book that was really informative for me was uh, Tim Keller's The Meaning of Marriage, mm-hmm. uh, Navigating the uh, Complexities of Commitment with the Wisdom of God. Um, that one uh, is really good for me, but um, cool. We can put that one in the notes. In, yeah, in the show notes. Perfect. Yeah. So you know what's fascinating to me is um, so much of what I hear from. Well, you're the generation of my kids, so just full disclosure, I have four mostly grown children who are 20, 22, 24, and 26, and they're amazing kids, but they're none of them are dating at all, and none of mm-hmm. them are thinking about marriage at all. They're all in this little space of uh, a little bit of despair about the state of things. Yeah, I remember. Um, so I, I dated uh, my senior year of high school and for a little bit and then graduated. She was a little bit younger than me. So we decided to break up and then um, dated my freshman year of college for a little bit. And I think when I got to college, that was the first time that I really started thinking about my future. Mm-hmm. And when I got there, I was like, oh, crap, like, what am I going to do with my life? (laughs) uh, I think at the time I was business pre-med trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my dad being a doctor, wanted to kind of try that out. Um, And so I was really focused on, okay, I'm here for school. I'm here for academics. I'm here to um, 
I'm on a mission and I felt like dating, a lot of dating that I saw seemed like people were just wearing rose colored glasses and it was all superficial. And um, so I, I was kind of jaded, I guess. That's <laughs> but, interesting. Yeah. Um, and then kind of uh, toward the end of college, I had a pretty powerful experience, had a close friend of mine that committed suicide. Oh. And um, it really just caused me to kind of re-examine my life. And, you know, I said I was a Christian, but um, I started kind of looking how I was living and just thinking about what happens when I die. And um, that experience really um, kind of brought me closer to God. I grew up in the church, but um, after that experience, I felt like God came really real to me and scripture really spoke to me and became my experience. And so kind of towards the end of that, I was, I wasn't really focused on relationships. I was more focused on my faith. And then after I graduated college, I was kind of thinking, well, you know, if, um, if God brings someone, you know, perhaps I'll, I'll be open to that. But now I'm kind of like, um, you know, you got to put your faith in action. You got to pray and you got to look. You got to, you know, someone's not just going to go poof. Yeah. Um, You got to be actively like you have to put yourself out there and be in an an environment where you would meet them. Yeah, exactly. What do you mean by the mindset habit? Is it part of that? I I definitely think um, the mindset that you have going in, I I think that plays. I think your mindset is very powerful in every aspect of life. Mm Um. I think with dating, having an, I, having the right mindset of what am I looking for and what am I doing? And I, I think that's really important. And I think a lot of people, dating's kind of something that is fun and social for, and Yeah. So it's I think having an idea of, you know, going into it, what am I looking for? I think that's really important. Um and sometimes you don't know necessarily what you're what you're looking for, but um and you have to figure that out. So I think that plays a piece there too. Yeah. So one of the things that I've noticed in the, uh, in dating, especially incorporating online dating, is that there's such a diversity now of people. Like when I was um, in college and dating, it was a pretty homogenous faith. We all ate the same type of food. Mm-hmm. We all uh, had well, not that we all had similar faith. I certainly had diverse friends, but when you met somebody, there was not so much trying to sort out the details of their preferences and their mindset and how they think. Yeah, yeah, that's um, that is one interesting interesting thing about online dating. Uh, for a long time, I was pretty, I guess, apprehensive to online dating. I didn't want to do it. I had all reasons why I didn't think it was good. I was um, kind of anti-social media and uh, just seeing smartphone dependency and um, so but, it's certainly an issue. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, but I remember my my older brother and his wife they got married this past August and they met mm-hmm. online uh, through an app called Coffee Meets Bagel. Um, okay. Interesting. But, yeah, I like it's kind of a funny name, but. Um, so I decided to kind of be a little bit more open to it. And one thing, um, one of the I, I think it's a pro. Some people could be more critical of it, but um, on online dating, you can put typically most apps have, you know, what's your religion? What's your, um, you know, your core beliefs and things about what's most important to you. Um, so you can kind of have a, you can find people that are aligned with you from very, um, very core fundamental um, beliefs. And I think, that's helpful. Yeah. So then, you have a little bit more, you kind of know what you're going. It's not a blind date totally, but. So do you find that people in your age group are looking for marriage? That's a good question. I think, I think they are. It is very interesting looking at the statistics. So if you look at around, I think 1950, the median age for men and women was about 23 and 21. And then if you fast forward to about 1970, it's about. 24 and 22. If you go to 1990, is about 27, 25. Now it's about 31 and 29. So it's going up about a year every decade. Interesting. Um, and I think a lot of people are, their idea of marriage has changed. I think historically, um, especially when our, our country is more religious, um, marriage was in the context of religion, of it's a lifelong covenant between a, um, a man and a woman before God. 
and it's a um, something that is for um, raising families and producing a functioning society. Yep. I think Always. now as people have become less religious, they've uh, marriage has also changed um, how how people look at it. So it's kind of more focused on where can I find personal fulfillment and self satisfaction. And um, how can this person support my goals? And so I think what you're finding is people have these kind of unrealistic expectations of marriage. And because of that, they're they're kind of disappointed in their partner because their partner is a human being. And it doesn't perfect. meet all of their everything. Exactly. They can't be their everything. Yeah. 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 And I believe that our satisfaction is ultimately found in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and if you look to an imperfect person for that satisfaction, you're you're going to be disappointed. And so I think people are looking to alternatives, whether that's cohabitation or, um, you know, some people. I remember there was um, a coworker of mine. I was listening to her conversation, and she was she was talking about um, she and her spouse got married, and she was saying like I don't know, I didn't really want to get married. Like, why do you need a piece of paper? And it was just interesting that. Her view was it's a piece of paper and it's um, she thought, like, what's the point of marriage? Like, why should I do that? We can just yeah. move in together. Like, what's the difference? Yeah. Um, and I think there's kind of a, a much different view largely today than 50 years ago. Well, you know, just speaking from my own personal experience, you know, my background, I don't know if you all know, but I've been I was married for almost 30 years to two different men and I've been divorced twice. And uh, my first husband, who's the father of my children, passed away of a heart attack about, let's see, it's been six years now. So I function mostly as a widowed family, you know, single mom and uh, the only parent to my kids. And uh, my my views have changed. So I, I was raised in a very um, Christian household, very conservative um, actually didn't have sex with my first husband until we were married, which mm. even back then was, uh, was very conservative. And, and I went into it with the same views that you're talking about. In fact, I've written, I wrote a book about Christian marriage and all of that. And we're not going to talk about that because I've got some different views now. So we're not advertising that, but, uh, I was, um, I was totally bought in to, the I totally understood the the spiritual side of it, the religious um, the spiritual side meaning the connection between man and woman becoming one, the religious side which is the structure of the church and the functioning of the family within that structure, and then the and the legal structure the legal structure of it which is the piece of paper that you're mm-hmm. alluding to, and um, now that I'm in the position that I'm in going having looking through this in hindsight i i still love the spiritual and not so much the religious i'm my worldview for religion has expanded i'm still very much a christian at my core but mm-hmm. uh, i like to say love draws a bigger circle and i've expanded my ability to love all different kinds of cultures and people in that way but the i still would love that spiritual oneness of a marriage i'm still looking for it but the legal stuff is just ridiculous and i and and so for me it's not the piece of paper that i want it's the piece of paper i don't want because it caused me so much pain the legal part of being married yeah yeah and that's um whenever i i've met a lot of people that are divorced and you hear the statistics of you know one in two people go through a divorce that are married yeah um there's so much hurt and I think, you know, there's the obvious le- the um, economic ramifications of the you know legal costs and all of that, but just the emotional hurt and the um, there's so much that you go through with that. And that's that's something that I think for me, really, I put a lot of thought into thinking about marriage and finding the right partner and because the uh, the pain and the suffering that comes from divorce, I can only imagine. Uh, well, and it, it, it w- the spiritual part, the spiritual divorce was difficult because that's mm-hmm. loss of oneness or loss of relationship. But the the legal and the financial part of divorce is what makes me not want to do it again. It was mm-hmm. if you separate out 
the uh, emotional, spiritual part of marriage from the legal marriage, which is basically a business contract. Mm -hmm. The business contracting of marriage within our society is it. It's like having two businesses join and unjoining those businesses is is really um, – that's a separate issue than the whole spiritual yeah. demise of a marriage, right? Yeah. And so I'm looking at it now. People say, do you want to get married again? I'm like, yeah, but not legally. Yeah. <laughs> or, or maybe I do. Maybe with the right person with the right legal protection mm -hmm. in place. But you know that that never would have been me 30 years ago. I never would have – thought that I needed to protect myself from the person that I loved and adored and was marrying to. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's just, um, I know your generation sees through this lens of seeing my generation going through divorces and um, yeah. What, what does your generation say about not having the piece of paper? That's where this, that's I'm wrapping back around to where this yeah. part of the di <laughs> I digressed. <laughs> <laughs> Where this digressed from was your friend who's like, I don't want the piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people are looking for alternatives. And I think a lot of people think, oh, cohabitation, all, you know, we don't have to do all of the legal hurdles and we can just, and, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can just, you know, part ways. Um, it's kind of a try before you buy. And that's not the answer mentality. either. I would, I would agree. Yeah. I think... Because marriage at its core, when you look at it, like what what's the origin of marriage? And I, I would say it comes comes from Scripture, the Bible. Um, you know, back in it, it's very interesting when if you think about reading a book, if you want to get the gist of it, you could read the first two pages and the last two pages. Uh, marriage is mentioned at the beginning of the Bible and the very end of the Bible um, when you have um, the creation of Adam and Eve. That's kind of the first marriage that uh, talks about a man will leave his father. Um, and mother and cling to his wife and the two shall become one. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the Bible, you see um, this marriage supper of the lamb of Christ and the church. And that's kind of the, the transcendent meaning of marriage that um, God became man so that he could have oneness and unity and we could be reconciled back to him despite us being, you know, sinful and rebelling against him. And that's, um, I think that's the most beautiful thing of marriage. But anyways. So that's more of a unification between the spiritual realm and our physical realm, like our soul and, and our physical reconciling to God. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that you have the kind of the physical institution of, you know, man and woman, but there's also the, it's kind of a drama that portrays, you know, Christ coming down, sacrificing himself uh, for the church, for us, um, and then the church being presented, you know, holy and blameless. Uh, there's a great passage in Ephesians that talks about that. The bride and the bridegroom. The bride being the church and the bridegroom being Christ. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that that wonderful call that husband and wife, um, you know, the husband can love his wife as Christ loved the church, laying down his life for her and this sacrificial love and commitment to her. And, you know, the wife trusts and, um, you know, loves loves her husband to lead her and to guide her. Um but anyways, the um, the di the digression from kind of alternatives of cohabitation, where I was getting at was marriage inherently is this promise that till death do us part, I'm going to love you thick and thin, you know, rich or poor, um, health or sick, you know, healthy or sick. And um, you don't have that if it's a, well... Let me just try it out and see right. um, if it works out just in case but if what we're compatible. If, what if you – because uh, when you get married, you have a religious ceremony if you're in a religious congregation. And then you have the legal paperwork, right? They're mm -hmm. two separate things. What if you just did the religious one and didn't do the legal one? That's a really interesting idea. I think – yeah. I, and I think that – I, another question comes to mind of, well, who has the authority to um, mandate a marriage? Is it the state or the church? Right. That's a whole nother. That's a cool. Or just the two people between themselves. Yeah. Even. Or just, yeah, just you and me, we're making this covenant, this promise between each other, death through his part. I, I think that is a very interesting um, 
alternative. I'm not advocating, um, by the way. I'm just throwing ideas out yeah. and deconstructing the whole the whole marriage thing. And, and yeah, and I'm throwing it at you because I'm curious about you know Our generation. your generation. Yeah. And so I think that is a very different thought than the we'll just try it out and cohabitate thing. Yeah, I think what I've seen a lot is I feel like it's probably more common my generation of kind of cohabitation. Um, I think though there is this there's this longing kind of for like when I hear um different stories of people saying, Oh, you know, we're high school sweethearts, that's such a rare thing, but I think more and more people are longing for that. Um and there's that intimacy and in knowing each other. Um long term and trusting the the trust connection. Yeah, exactly. And I have your back, do or die, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know with online dating, it's, um, that's kind of the, that's, that's how a lot of people meet, whether it's, um, I think that's, there's different dating apps out there with different kind of cultures and mindsets of what you're looking for. Um, so, um, it really depends kind of what you're looking for. I think you can find something, you can find a place to meet your people's yeah. In some place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about your generation's thought about um, health and diet and, you know, the worldview, how society and economics are changing so much. Like there's so much in your that your generation has access to, to think about and choose from that our generation didn't have until now. We, we have it now and we're adapting to it. But mm-hmm. tell me about how that influences your, your dating. You mentioned that you had been um, vegan or vegetarian in the past. Yeah. 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 I tried. Um, I've really experimented when it comes to um, eating and diet. I remember um, in high school, I got to working out because I wanted to become better at basketball and then eventually I got into it so much that I stopped playing basketball and just worked out. And so um, I think that was kind of my first um, my first attempt at trying out fitness and prioritizing that. And then I think when I got to college, I tried a lot of different things, you know, keto, vegan, intermittent fasting. Um, now I'm kind of more whole foods and focusing on the quality of the food. Um but when it when it comes to I think eating and dating diet diet and dating that would yeah. be an interesting book title right there you go <laughs> um, I think just the overall mindset with millennials I think it's there's a lot of kind of looking for different preferences and I, I think it come like the, the the thing that I'm thinking of is with um, Work, work life balance. That's kind of a millennial thing. Yeah. And a lot of um, you know, the boomer generation, all these millennials, they know how to work hard and they have a point. Um, and I think there's a lot of, a, when, with dating, it's kind of like, how can I design the perfect relationship or fitting all my criteria? And, uh, and that's, that fits with dating apps. It's like, okay, I want to find yeah, someone yeah. who eats this way, believes this, does this, does that, yeah. checks off all these boxes. I have this list. Oh, they check this list. All right, I'm going to match with them. Yeah. So it becomes a little bit, um, what's the word? I, inorganic. Like sometimes you can't, you can't just label people. You can't choose what love's going to yeah. find for you. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And, um, and sometimes I think you have to, I think being aligned on certain things is important, but there's going to be other things that, um, you know, you just, you see things differently, but I think diet is becoming more and more of a bigger, Uh, yeah. yeah, of like, you know, is, I think, I think it's an important thing for me of, I would want to be with someone who prioritizes health and fitness that right, wants to live a healthy lifestyle. Because you want them to be with you for a long yeah, time, right? Yeah, we want to yeah. yeah enjoy life together for a long time, have health and longevity, yeah. all of that. Yeah. And I think that that's, a, that's more than just what we're going to eat for dinner. It's a whole mindset thing. Yeah. How can I live a life that's healthy and how can I um, live a life that's, you know, getting rid of the bad things and the toxic things? Yeah. And you have such awareness and uh, you're so articulate 
I, I just loved our interview. Thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, it's been great. It's Thank really you for fun. having me. Yeah. yeah. You want to tell our folks how they can find you? Yeah, sure thing. So um, you can find me on Instagram. That's uh, Andrew Hall 1229 98. I need to get a little more creative with that. <laughs> and then I also recently um, started writing on Medium. You can find me at Andrew Hall 1229. And then I also write a little bit for an organization called The Washington Stand. And that's uh, WashingtonStand.org. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, if you enjoyed Andrew's conversation with me, please like, share, and subscribe. Those are the three words I always have to remember. Yes. <laughs> Hit the like buttons below. And if you have ideas for us about what you want on future shows, please drop me a comment. Tell me what you think about some of the things we talked about. I look forward to seeing you next week on Tuesday. Take care and have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye.